Welcome to the Deep Dive. Hi there. Today, we're plunging into something absolutely fundamental, uh, something invisible that really shapes our world and, well, protects our lives. Earth's magnetic field. Yeah, and it's a field that's been acting a bit, well, let's say strange lately. Specifically, its magnetic north pole is really on the move. Right. And that's sparked a lot of conversation you know, about something called a pole shift or even a full reversal. Exactly. You sent over this uh, this great stack of sources, articles, research, notes, and our mission today in this deep dive is to unpack all of it. Mm -hmm. We want to understand what's really going on with this moving pole, what a full reversal actually is, what these sources are telling us about potential effects on our lives. And crucially... Yeah, crucially, separate the fact from the, maybe, the hype only using the material you've provided us here. Absolutely. It's definitely a topic that's ripe for speculation, but the science, you know, as laid out in these sources, it paints a pretty clear picture. Still mysterious in parts, but clearer. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. Why is this magnetic field such a big deal in the first place? What do the sources really emphasize about its importance? Well, think of it like our planet's invisible shield. It's just absolutely vital for life as we know it. Right. It deflects the vast majority of harmful solar UV rays, cosmic radiation, and also those streams of charged particles constantly hitting us from the sun, what we call the solar wind. Yeah. Without that protective bubble, the magnetosphere, the surface environment would be, well, dramatically different, much, much less hospitable. The ultimate cosmic bodyguard, basically. And uh, on a more day-to-day -day level, it's also how compasses work, right? Exactly. Guiding everything from, you know, hikers to huge ships for centuries, a fundamental navigation tool. And this amazing shield. Hmm. Where does it come from? The research says deep inside the Earth. That's right. It's generated by the swirling uh, convective motion of molten iron way down in Earth's outer core, like a giant dynamic geodynamo. Dynamic is the word. And that brings us right to the first big point in your sources, this moving magnetic pole. Mm -hmm. The research seems to be highlighting right now that Earth's magnetic north pole isn't just moving, it's uh, kind of on a sprint. That's exactly what makes this period so fascinating for scientists. The people tracking this movement say it's shifting towards Siberia at what they're describing as an unprecedented speed. Unprecedented speed. Wow. Okay, that sounds pretty significant. Is that what we keep hearing about navigation updates and things like that? Precisely. This rapid movement is so noticeable, so pronounced, that it actually required an unscheduled official update to the World Magnetic Model, the WOM. Oh, right. That update happened just recently, mid-December 2024. And that model is critical for navigation systems everywhere, isn't it? Usually the WOM gets updated every five years, so needing an, like an emergency update. Hmm that really highlights how unpredictable and fast this pole is shifting. Yeah, it does, though it's worth remembering the magnetic pole has always moved. It's not fixed. We have records going back centuries, like from London and Paris since the 1580s, and they show the magnetic pole just kind of drifts and meanders around the geographic North Pole over time. That baseline movement, that's totally normal. Okay, right. So movement is normal, but it's the speed that's the big news now. Exactly. The research clearly shows the speed accelerated dramatically around the mid-1990s. Oh, wow. Yeah, it jumped from drifting maybe just over 9 meters a year, about 30 feet, to around 34 meters a year. That's over 110 feet per year. Huge difference. And very recently, it actually crossed the international dateline, moving into the Eastern Hemisphere, heading towards Siberia. It's a massive acceleration. Yeah. How are scientists even measuring this so precisely? Well, we have much better tools now than we did, you know, even a few decades ago. Mm. Missions like the European Space Agency's uh, Swarm Constellation of Satellites. Right, Swarm launched in 2013. That's the one. They provide superb continuous data. These satellites let scientists map the magnetic field and track these changes much more frequently, sometimes every six to 12 months. Mm -hmm. And they've also observed something else a weakening in the strength of the core magnetic field, particularly in certain regions. So the data is really solid then. And what's driving this, this astonishing shift, as one source put it, there's a quote from Dr. Phil Livermore. Yeah, from the University of Leeds. He suggests it's linked to changes in the flow patterns of that molten iron deep in the core. Uh -huh. He actually describes it almost like a battle between the magnetic patches under Canada and Siberia. A battle. Yeah, with the Siberian patch currently winning out, essentially pulling the pole eastward. That's a really vivid image, a magnetic tug of war deep beneath our feet. But okay, while this rapid motion is clearly a major scientific puzzle, 
What does it mean for the big question, the idea of a full magnetic pole reversal? NASA's Earth Observatory, which you cited, seems pretty clear on this. They are quite clear. NASA basically states that while this rapid motion is definitely a fascinating sign of changes happening deep inside the Earth, changes we're really only beginning to understand. It does not indicate an imminent pole reversal. Okay, does not indicate an imminent reversal. Good to clarify. So the rapid movement is happening now, but a full flip, that's a whole different scale of event. Right, so let's define that. Based on the sources, what is a magnetic pole reversal exactly? Simply put, it's when the north and south magnetic poles swap places. What was magnetic north becomes magnetic south and vice versa. The whole thing flips. And this isn't just some, you know, sci-fi theory for the future. The sources say this is a well-documented part of Earth's history. Right? Oh, absolutely. The geological record is quite clear. It shows this has happened many, many times. The estimate is roughly 183 times just over the last 83 million years. Wow. So on average. On average, that works out to about every 450,000 years or so. Oh. But, and this is important, the timing is highly variable. Sometimes there are gaps of up to 10 million years between full flips, so the average isn't a great predictor. Okay, so it's happened a lot, but irregularly. And the last full reversal, when was that? According to the sources we have, it was about 780,000 years ago. 780,000 years. So technically, Based purely on that rough average, you could say we're overdue. Yeah. But like you said, the average covers such huge variable time scales. Yeah. It's not really a reliable clock. Exactly. It doesn't work like that. And the sources also make a distinction between a full reversal and something called geomagnetic excursions. The excursions, what are those? They're shorter events, significant changes in the field's intensity and direction, but they don't actually complete a full stable flip. They might last for centuries, maybe up to tens of thousands of years, and then things return more or less to how they were. Okay, like a failed reversal attempt. And one specific excursion mentioned is the Le Champs event, right? Around 41, 42,000 years ago. Yes, Le Champs. And your sources have slightly different takes on it, which is interesting. One kind of calls it a reversal that flipped back quickly, uh -huh. while another describes it more strictly as just an excursion, not a full flip. There's still some scientific debate on the exact terminology. But the main point is consistent. Right, the core finding is consistent. During Le Champs, the field weakened significantly, the poles moved dramatically, maybe even briefly flipped, but didn't settle into a new stable reverse state before eventually going back to the original polarity. Got it. And there was another study mentioned, a 2018 one, suggesting the field also weakened a lot before the last full reversal, the one 780,000 years ago. Correct. Weakening seems to be a precursor. Okay, but what's key here, I think, for a lot of listeners is what happens during these events, a full reversal or a major excursion. Does our shield just vanish? Are we left totally exposed? No, and this is a really critical point that the sources emphasize strongly. During a pole reversal, the main magnetic field weakens, maybe down to like 10 or 20 percent of its normal strength. Okay, significant weakening. But it doesn't disappear completely. That's the key. It might become more complex, more jumbled, maybe even with multiple temporary magnetic poles popping up in weird places. But the planet isn't left completely naked, so to speak. Correct. The magnetosphere, even though it's weaker and maybe a bit misshapen along with our atmosphere, continues to provide protection from most cosmic rays and solar particles. Ah, the atmosphere too. Yes. The sources do mention that maybe a small amount of extra particulate radiation might reach the surface when the field is very weak, but it's not like the shield vanishes entirely. Okay, that's reassuring. And perhaps the most important detail from the sources about a full flip. <sighs> It's not sudden, it's not like a light switch. Absolutely not. The sources are really clear on this. A full reversal doesn't happen overnight. The consensus is the entire process stretches over thousands of years. Thousands of years. Yes, this is a slow geological process unfolding over vast time scales, not an instant catastrophe. Okay, so a full flip is probably millennia away and takes a very long time to unfold. But the weakening field during that long process, or maybe even the current rapid pull movement we're seeing now, could still have impacts on today's world, right? Especially our technology. What do the sources say there? Yes, this is where the potential impacts become much more relevant to our modern lives, even if a full flip is distant. 
The effects of a significantly weakened magnetic field could indeed be profound, specifically on our technology. Because that weaker shield offers less protection against solar activity, solar storms, that kind of thing. Precisely. A weaker field means less defense against the solar wind and high energy cosmic rays. The sources highlight several potential issues. Like? Well, obviously, magnetic compasses would become less reliable, potentially useless in some scenarios, but much more critically, satellites. Oh, yeah. Satellites power so much GPS, telecommunications, weather monitoring, scientific observation. They could be disrupted or even permanently damaged by the increased radiation exposure. Hmm. This all sounds like the kind of problems we sometimes hear about during really intense solar flares or geomagnetic storms now. That's exactly the point the sources make. Effects that we currently only really worry about during strong solar events. Right. Things like satellite glitches or outages, increased radiation doses for people on long-haul flights or astronauts on the International Space Station, distortion of GPS signals or radio communications. Those would likely increase in frequency and intensity. So they could happen even during more moderate solar activity if the Earth's shield was generally weaker. That seems to be the concern highlighted in the sources, yes. A weaker baseline shield means less buffer against everyday space weather. So not necessarily an extinction level event for life, but potentially a major ongoing challenge for our technological infrastructure. That's a good way to put it. Are scientists and engineers just, you know, sitting back and watching this happen or are steps being taken? Oh, not at all. The sources mention ongoing efforts to adapt. Scientists are constantly updating that world magnetic model, the WMM, precisely to help systems like GPS compensate for the magnetic field's real-time changes. And engineers are actively researching and developing better magnetic shielding technologies for satellites, certainly, and potentially even for critical ground infrastructure like power grids, which can also be vulnerable to geomagnetic disturbances. Adaptation is definitely part of the picture already. Okay, moving from technology, let's tackle another big claim you sometimes hear linked to bull shifts climate change. What do the sources, especially that NASA one, say about any connection there? Yeah, this is a really crucial point to clarify based strictly on the sources we have here. The science discussed, particularly in the NASA source, it does not support the argument that variations in the magnetic field are causing the current global warming trend or are likely to cause catastrophic climate change. Okay, and NASA gives some pretty clear physics-based reasons for that conclusion, doesn't it? They do. Two main points really stand out in their explanation. First, the amount of energy involved. Mm. The energy from space weather that interacts with Earth's magnetic field primarily affects the upper atmosphere, the ionosphere, the thermosphere. And the total energy deposited up there is tiny, absolutely minute, compared to the energy driving climate down here at the surface where we live. How many? Like 100,000 times less energy. And these effects happen way up high, you know, 50 kilometers and above, mostly much higher. They simply don't significantly impact the troposphere or the lower stratosphere where our weather and climate actually originate. Okay, so the energy is too low and it's happening way too high up to affect surface climate. What was the second point? It's actually quite fundamental physics. Air isn't magnetic or more accurately, it doesn't contain significant amounts of ferrous material like iron. Right. So right. as the NASA source puts it, there's no known physical mechanism mechanism capable of connecting weather conditions at Earth's surface with electromagnetic currents in space. The physics just doesn't provide a plausible link for the magnetic field to directly drive surface weather or climate patterns in the way some theories propose. What about that Lachamps event, though? The excursion around 41,500 years ago. Mm -hmm. Didn't that happen during a period of climate variability, like within the last ice age? Yes, it did. And the NASA source addresses this directly. While there's some evidence suggesting maybe some regional and relatively subtle climate changes around the time of the Lachamps excursion, uh -huh. the ice core records, which give us a really good global picture, show no major global climate shifts that directly coincide with that magnetic event. Any climate fluctuations observed seem to be well within the normal natural variability of the ice age world Earth was experiencing at the time. So the science presented in these sources seems pretty definitive on this particular link or lack thereof. It does. The NASA source sums it up with a pretty direct bottom line. It is. There's no evidence that Earth climate has been significantly impacted by the last three magnetic field excursions, nor by any excursion event within at least the last 2.8 million years. Okay. Clear enough. So that addresses technology and climate. What about direct impacts on life itself, you know, human health, animal behavior? Do the sources get into that? 
They touch on it. The sources note that any effects on human biology are, quote, still being studied. They acknowledge that increased solar radiation exposure during a significantly weakened field could theoretically have some long-term consequences. Mm. And they mentioned some theories suggesting it might affect things like brain activity or perhaps the navigational instincts of migratory animals that seem to use the magnetic field. Right, like birds or sea turtles. Exactly. Mm. But there's an important counterpoint here too, isn't there, about the atmosphere's role? Yes, absolutely. That space.com source offers some important reassurance. It states that even with the reduced magnetic shielding during a reversal, our atmosphere, our, air. our thick atmosphere, would still provide sufficient shielding at Earth's surface. The humans and animals would not be significantly affected by increased radiation levels reaching the ground. Uh -huh. The atmosphere itself is a very powerful radiation shield. So it's like a two-layered defense system. Magnetosphere first, atmosphere second. Pretty much, yeah. And the atmosphere is a very robust second layer, especially for the types of radiation we're talking about here. Okay, so let's try and pull all this together from our deep dive today. What are the key takeaways? Well, first, the magnetic north pole is currently moving unusually fast, heading towards Siberia. That's real, it's interesting, likely driven by changes deep in Earth's core. And it requires us to keep updating our navigation tech, like the WMM. Exactly. But second, this rapid movement is not seen by scientists, based on these sources, as a sign of an imminent magnetic pole reversal. Right. A full reversal is a geological process, takes thousands of years, hasn't happened for about 780,000 years. Very long time scales. You're up. Third, while a future reversal, when it eventually happens, would involve a significantly weakened magnetic field. Which could definitely challenge our modern technology by lowering our defenses against solar activity. Yes, but the sources indicate Earth's atmosphere should still provide enough shielding at the surface to protect humans and animals from dangerous levels of increased radiation. Life has survived many reversals before. Okay. And fourth, and this seems really important based on the sources, the idea that magnetic field changes are responsible for current global warming or are about to trigger catastrophic climate events. Simply isn't supported by the scientific evidence presented in these materials. The physics doesn't line up and the historical data doesn't show a strong causal link. It really highlights we live on a dynamic planet, doesn't it? with these huge, powerful forces at play that we're only just beginning to fully understand. Absolutely. The rapid pole shift itself is still described as a major scientific mystery in some ways. Researchers are still working hard to understand the details of what's happening in the core. So here's a final thought, drawing on all this. Given how absolutely essential Earth's magnetic field is for protecting life, for enabling our technology and knowing its behavior is inherently dynamic and frankly, still not entirely understood, what does this ongoing scientific mystery reveal about our reliance, maybe our vulnerability, to these immense natural forces beyond our immediate control? And how might thinking about that shape our future preparedness as a species? That's, yeah, that's a deep question to ponder. How we adapt to forces we can't control but are learning more about all the time. Something for you, the listener, to think about. That concludes this deep dive.